from Duquesne, Texas now, originally from Nebraska, Ben Milliken. And a three day total of 77 pounds and 14 ounces here at Toledo Bend. And your ticket was just punched to the 2024 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bass Master Classic. Yeah. yeah. That's my biggest goal in doing all this, and it's unbelievable it already happened. It's over! Yeah. Let's go. Boom! Yes. Come on, that's the one, that's the one. A 77 pounds oh! and 14 ounces here at Toledo Bend. Manny, Louisiana, I need you getting loud for your champion here, Ben Milliken. What's up, MFers? Welcome to the second Bassmaster Open EQ of the year in my home state. Actually, we're not in my home state right now. We are physically in Louisiana, but we are at Toledo Bend Lake on the border of Texas and Louisiana. Practice starts today. I'm freaking jacked for this one, guys. Even though it is the closest open to me, only about two and a half hours from my house, I've spent a whopping one day total on this lake prior to the off limits period, which has been the last 27 days, I think. So yeah, not any experience here, but it was really nice not having to drive 10 to 25 hours to this one. Woke up this morning, me and Coleslaw rolled in. We got dropped off at our B&B we're staying at. Actually, it's not a B&B, it's just an MFer's house, Brad the MFer. This place might be the nicest place or one of that we've ever stayed at. It's absolutely incredible. We'll show you guys that later. Broccoli's coming a little bit later. He's probably out pre-fishing right now. We're getting a little bit of a late start. You know, the sun came up a half hour ago, so <laughs> late for us. But uh, we're gonna get to the ramp here in a second. And this is gonna be a very exciting open. We, we got giant fish in this lake in a giant, giant, giant body of water. I think, not I think, this is the largest body of water we're fishing in the opens at almost 200,000 acres. One of the biggest lakes I've fished in my life. Probably the biggest besides Oahe and the Great Lakes. It's truly a massive body of water. And we got some really cool stuff going on at this lake right now, a lot of different things. I have a pretty good idea of how I'm gonna break down my practice and hopefully how this tournament is going to play out. We got a fifth place finish last time. Four of those guys were doing all nine opens, so we are fourth in points right now, and I could not be more excited to keep the train rolling, I hope. The good thing about this one is we're gonna have an opportunity to throw some big baits. Some of the baits you guys see me throw in my videos. Add some giant fish. Hopefully we can make it happen, but we'll catch you guys at the ramp. I'm gonna go through some of the baits I'm gonna be throwing, some of the stuff I'm gonna be targeting. You guys can tell by how fast I'm talking right now. I'm all turn up. We're gonna freaking whack them. Okay, so we're to the parking lot. I'm itching to get this boat launched, so I'll try to keep this kind of brief, but I got a bunch of different baits tied up. Like I said, there's a lot of different stuff going on right now. If you look at Toledo Bend on the map, it might not look as crazy big as it is, but I think it's 80 miles long or so, and then a lot of these big spawning creeks you're seeing off to the Texas side is where most of them are. They're five, six miles long. So, I mean, a lot of the launches are in the back of those creeks. It's six minutes to even get to the main lake. The place is just massive. I don't know if I can reiterate that much, but really what should be going on, and we're gonna you know, never have preconceived notions, but definitely gonna be a lot of fish on beds, getting off of beds. There's gonna be a shad spawn going on. It's in some capacity, and um, there could still be some pre-spawners too. And then of course, we're gonna kind of follow the progression as the week goes on and hopefully get some of those fish that have moved off early off their beds and they're out grouped up feeding in a big way. I hope so anyways. It'll be kind of like last time, except these are post spawners, not pre-spawners. So I got all different types of baits up here on the deck tied on. So obviously for the offshore stuff, I mean, it's not a freaking mystery what I'm gonna be throwing. I got a 500 DD tied on, I got a 300 DD tied on and a C10. Um, I also got a mini mag square bill tied on. I like to keep some of my rods back there in the back. You know, it looks like I got a million, but I'm probably gonna be fishing some shallower stuff than you really would think for fishing offshore. It's probably gonna be close to deep water, but when we have low light conditions all day like we do today, um, the shad spawn can prolong a little bit longer. So we're gonna try to get that going on some of these harder main lake points. As we look around, I like to establish a pattern, establish what's going on, catch a couple the first few days, and then kind of dial it in and see how the fish are moving as we get going. Again five day practice period, it's way too long. I felt it was warranted though to come and check this place out and get very familiar with it because it is really big. One major thing that we need to talk about 
is going to be the weather in this tournament. So it's rained a lot the last few days. We had nice consistent 70s, 80s every day, and then much cooler 50s for highs, down to 40s at night, 60s as highs and stuff the last three days. And it's pretty much rained the entire time. So we've got a couple inches of rain. The lakes only come up about a foot and a half, but that's definitely going to help out a lot of these guys that are shallow water fishermen. Now, as the week goes on, it's not supposed to rain anymore. And so, fingers crossed, what I'm really hoping for is a lot of people get on that shallow water bite. They get kind of locked into wanting to do that these first few days of practice. And then that kind of dwindles out as people beat those shallow fish up because it's hard to fish for them without, you know, shaking them off and stuff like that. And as it gets kind of sunnier, warmer, that offshore post-frontal summer post-spawn bite kind of picks up as the week goes on. But for now, we need to figure out the areas of lake that they're in. I never thought I would have this tied on, but uh, I have three Carolina rigs tied on right now, and they're gonna serve three different purposes for me. Once we get on the water and hopefully start catching a few fish on them, I'll kind of explain it to you. But I got my three favorite Carolina rig baits tied on. I got the Flush from Six Sense and a green pumpkin juice color, hog wall and green pumpkin juice. And then I don't know if I'm even supposed to show you this, but I'm going to, cause you guys are awesome. But we're coming out with this bigger size of the flush. Look at this son bitch next to the regular one. Like this is a, the flush is bigger than like the zoom fluke. Um, and just, it's kind of like the in between a zoom fluke and a magnum fluke. So it's already a pretty good size. Look at the size difference there. This lake is known for having big bait fish and it's got big bluegill in it. And that's a big part of the forage, not just the shad. So this bait's gonna be one I try out along with another bait that I absolutely cannot show you on that Carolina rig, but it's gonna be fun. And then of course I got a couple topwater baits tied on to kind of check some of the, the shad spawn and stuff like that going on. I was gonna show you this guy. This is a bait I'm gonna be throwing hopefully in this tournament if we can get something going, but you guys know we have the catwalk topwater bait. This is the Magnum Catwalk. I'm excited for this bait to come out because big topwaters are the deal. And these color schemes are incredible. A bone color with some flash on the sides, a chrome color with the scales, got the purple on top. These guys are gonna get some big bites for people. I don't know if they're out quite yet, but they're gonna be out very, very soon. I threw together a little mag topwater box with some of those big walking baits and some, uh, some ploppers and stuff like that. And then um, we're gonna do some scoping, of course, too. One big part of my pre-fishing is going to be live scoping with big baits, not only for the fish that are suspended in the timber and stuff, but also the shad spawn can get really, really good up shallow with some of these big baits. So six cents draw is gonna be a big factor. And then of course, like I just told you guys, bed fishing could really come into play. It's going to come into play, especially when the weather's not quite like this. Um, once it kind of cools down, some of the stain gets out of the water and we get some sun later in the week, there's definitely gonna be fish on beds. We had the moon Thursday, it is now Saturday. So we're only a couple days after a big wave probably came in on that moon, probably the last wave or one of the last waves that'll come in. The full moon likes to bring fish to the bank. So they've been a little bit shallower. And we just came out with two new shades from Waterland that are my two new favorite bed fishing glasses. So this one right here is a glass lens and that's the Melican frame. And it's called the Golden Light is what this one is. It's phenomenal for these low light conditions. I, it's, it's such a clear lens. It's the clearest glass lens that I've ever put on my face. And then you guys have seen me wear the bed fisher too. I'm in love with this. The wraparound model that's zero light. And this is a polycarbonate lens, so it's quite a bit cheaper. This one's called the Blue Honey. This one will be a little bit clearer of a lens and the, the yellow is a little bit better in lower light conditions like we got today. So that's probably what I'll wear. And then this guy right here is kind of more of an all condition lens. I've had really good luck with the sun out. But then the other day you saw me bed fishing with these and it was like cloudy rain and stuff. And I was seeing those beds really, really well. So it's a great all around lens. MF15 code on either of these, I'll link them down below. Lows, $40 off this glass lens pair. And we just lowered the price actually of all of our glass lenses. So use the MF15 code. You literally can get them cheaper than any other glass lens on the market, at least any other good glass lens on the market. And I'm seriously blown away by them, but I can't freaking wait any longer. I got to get out there. We're going to fish a lot of main lake stuff today. Probably go check some stuff a little bit into creeks, but mostly try to focus on some of these main lake flats and points. Scan and see if they're in groups offshore. And first things first, we're gonna start maybe up shallow. See if we can get some shad spawn stuff going. This is just a start, guys. I cannot freaking wait for this tournament. We need a good finish here. And it's a place that we definitely can do it. So this is the type of 
that I'm looking for right now that the shad will spawn on are these points, these, these shallower main lake points where you have nothing flat bottom and then comes right up to this hard clay type points. That's what I'm talking about a lot. When you guys hear me talking about clay points and hard bottom points and stuff, and they'll get way up shallow on them too. So I'm kind of using my, my historical imagery, which is the Apple <laughs> right now actually has the best low water map of this lake from whatever freaking year they got their earth image from and kind of going through and seeing exactly where the hard spots are at. This guy in front of me appears to be doing the same thing, but that's okay. These shad spawn spots and really just offshore points and stuff are good because all these coves back here, the bass can go back and spawn in. So not only is it um, a spot where they can come feed up before and after they spawn, but it's just a great stopping point on that highway of winter location out there spawn location and out nice to be able to set the hook potentially of course one would have to bite but had one well my first cast with the hog walla uncricketed me i got uncricketed that's my south dakota one you can tell because the fucking way it is no more paint left. Look at that. That's not big. Just kidding. Look at how this one's built, Cole. Ooh, he got a black dot virus. Getting gulped. Here, man. Look at that fish. Unreal. Freaking, I think you wanted the hog waller. It's coming out the gill, it's so deep. This little three and a half pounder. Look at those spots. Speaking of look at the spots, I've been fishing these points. I don't know what it is different about this one, but there is a ton of big ones on it. Or at least good ones like this. Dude, is that one freaking did you bring the fillet knife, Cole? Nope. Let's cut her open. You're just gonna have to bite a hole. Cut her open and see if she's pre or post. I mean, she looks like a damn pre-spawner, but I can't tell if it's just, oh good, she's gonna live too. Can't tell if it's just food belly. Kinda just looks like food belly. It's not too bulbous, it's just wide. Good one to start with. All right, let's get out of here. Carolina rigged, hog waller. You get used to hearing that, I think. The thing I really like about this spot right here is close proximity to our b and That's the same effort's place we're staying at, guys. Like I was saying, place is absolutely beautiful. Just got the roof redone. Well, not really redone, but he added some uh, tarps. Good looking tarps. Keeps the rain out sometimes, sort of. And it's got great air conditioning. Uh, you open the windows at night. That's probably mean to say, cause I would live there. <laughs> that was cool. I'm gonna cut a topwater fish in a minute. I thought it was a myth. Trace Pounda. He's got some of the black spot thing too, dude. Huh. Ow. Ow. Gonna be a lot of fish caught in this tournament. Gonna have to get them to do well. Oh, a bunch of fish. Here, let's catch some. There was like 10 on my Hank. Oh, God. Look at these motherfuckers.
Really? You're not going to eat a jerk bait? There we go. Oh. Definitely a bass. Oh, he got it. Bunch of these dudes. Let's go to the other side, Cole. Keeper. And a whole load of fish. A little provoked jerk bait in his grill. Not a giant one, but pulled up to a flat point at the mouth of a major spawning creek. That, I don't know, it's a male probably, so it didn't really count, but probably post spawners. And I had like 10 fall on my glide, and then I panned up there, and there was like 20 more, so. Yeah. Just kind of feeling around still. Tree suspendo. Crossways, brother. That guy left. Five pounder. Yep. Bud. Jerked him right off a tree. Had one that almost came up and ate the glide right before that. Heck yeah, buddy. It's a good one. I'm gonna need 15 of those guys. I think I can make that happen 15 times, but you know how that works. Things can be a little different in five days. 162, 529. Good. Is she pre? Can't really tell. Cool. Let's keep on going. Sorry, I rearranged it. Good luck. What's my fish in it? He's got his mouth stuck open. Crazy three and a half pounder on the provoke. Just kind of jerking around in a staging area. We moved down the lake and the water's cooler down here still. And that's one thing I didn't mention, but the lower end the fish will spawn later and that one was done. So not really a sure thing, but I think mostly post-spawners today so far. Oh! There we go. Damn it, Cole, mother giant one too. They're all with him. Anybody else? Oh man. Oh, awesome. Now you're going to stop. It's a winning group of fish right there, man. Freaking pre-spawner or something, dude? Or is he just full of, full of something? 
I'll make one more cast on it now this goofball's gone. First cast of the deep crank that got down there. Take note of how I fought that fish and it stayed pinned. Wait till tournament day. <laughs> That was six pounder, right? Pretty damn close. I don't think it was even one of the good ones, to be honest. Look at them all cool. <laughs> Smaller one. That keeper, but I hear jig really quick. Giant one. Total and giant. Time to leave, coleslaw. There's about 40 of these down there. Get this one in quick. Freaking trash bag mouse. Post spawners, dude. Keep them coming out here is what I'm saying keep them coming out here bigs dude flying nice just for a little reference quick and to show these two boats the spot probably just another six but a high six I thought he was a 10 pounder or something when he freaking We're out of here. I'm not coming back here till the last day. Good morning, MFers. Welcome out to day number two of practice for the Toledo Bend Open. I'm jacked about what I found yesterday. Started off in the morning on the shad spawn stuff and fished a lot of those shallow, rocky, hard bottom clay points like I was telling you guys. And not all of them had fish, all of them had shad that I'd stop on. Uh, but there was a couple of them I caught fish, rolled out of there, and a couple that I saw a ton of fish. I just think it's gonna be all about with those, whether you pull up and they're two pounders or if they're three and a half to five pounders or even bigger. There could be a, a giant pull up on one of those points. So. I feel pretty good about that not going away in the next five days with the weather going to be kind of similar um, with what's happening and really that that should just kind of continue throughout the entire lake but then i went out deep scanned around fished around and i found a crazy group of fish that i'll just be straight with you guys they are the winning fish i pulled up the first time to them and i didn't think i could get a crankbait down to them so i just threw like a, a line through a jerk bait and a glide bait and they looked weird on the mat the side scan i couldn't even tell if they were bass or not and so i got them to come up and nip the bait and i was like man i don't think those are catfish i don't think they're gar but they won't commit to it so i don't know if they're bass either so i wasn't really sure but then i went back later in the day and i threw the deep crank finally got it down to hit bottom and boom i caught uh, six, I caught a high six, I caught another keeper, and I got the hell out of there as quick as I could. Problem with that spot is I think it's very volatile for three reasons. One, as I told you guys, these dudes are some of the best fishermen in the world. As you saw at Ufala, 
I had to have several schools because they find everything. The spot is a little bit off the beaten path. It is a tough spot to see the fish because of the trees and where it's at. Um, but these guys find everything, I feel like. So hard to say that I would get that spot to myself. Two, it's very, very volatile because it's very main lake, which means it's very susceptible to wind. Yesterday, the wind only got up to like 10 miles an hour and still had some solid chop out there. If the wind blows over 15, over 20, not even gonna be able to get on that spot likely. And three, I think from what I've been hearing, there's a lot of current being generated the lake the last few weeks and that spot based on where it's at, maybe I'll show you guys on the map. I'm kind of trying to keep this stuff on the DL a little bit for this tournament more than you follow because Toledo is somewhere I will fish some tournaments, but that's absolutely a current related spot. So if the current stops generating, um, if something changes with that, those fish could move completely or they could suspend to get really tough. Uh, and I think they're eating yellow bass, white bass, uh, along with some big gizzard shad from what I saw, some, some groups of uh, white bass moving through there. So that all could cause those fish to move. I hope to God they don't, but we're gonna keep expanding on that pattern today. Uh, if you're familiar with the lake, I'll show you a map right now. We just launched broccoli. That's Stan at the house, by the way, my, my brother from Nebraska. Check his stuff out, I'll link Brock down below, but one of the best fishermen, if not the best in the Nebraska, South Dakota area. Stay with us last time, stay with us again. You'll be seeing plenty of him throughout the year. He's the man. He launched down here with me too, but we're down in Pirate's Cove. I know there's a lot of fish in this cove. It's a giant spawning cove with a lot of flats, a lot of drains, uh, a lot of points, a lot of deep stuff, shallow stuff, timber, a little bit of everything in here. And so I'm gonna try to find some, uh, some fish back here. It's definitely, it's a more protected cove if that wind does get whipping out on the main lake, but it's a big enough place that, um, and there's enough offshore stuff. I think I can scan around and find some fish. There's gotta be fish somewhere in this giant place. But regardless, I'm pumped. Um, Coleslaw's not with me today, he's editing, and today's gonna be one of those days that I really enjoy. It's my favorite type of day where I sit behind the wheel and I drive around and look for stuff way more so than I fish. Not too exciting for, uh, for someone sitting next to me watching it all happen uh, or trying to make some type of video content. So Cole's spending his time much more uh, effectively for our squad here. But I'm gonna throw the headphones in, get, uh, get, just get the vibes going with Prof's new album. Prof sent me his album the other day, his newest one that's coming out Maybe by the time you watch this video, April 10th, I believe it is. And it's absolutely incredible, so check that out if you haven't. I am going to uh, get to scan and some of this offshore stuff. Wish me luck today. And I got the uh, the front cam going, so you guys will uh, see. I'll periodically be checking in, telling you how the day is going, and maybe shoot some stuff here on the phone too. Let's keep it. Well, we've been scanning and fishing around for about an hour and a half, two hours, and I found something that's really interesting. It's not a fish catch or anything, but I think you guys can take from it. Um, yeah, my, my little cue from nature is no longer here. He is down eating what I'm about to show you. So taking a look at the screen, you're not going to see any big bass or any schools or anything going on, but you're going to see a lot of this stuff going on. And to an untrained eye, um, some of these marks down here would look like a stump or, I don't know, a catfish or something like that. And some of them might be, but the little cue from nature I'm talking about is a loon. And as you guys know, loons are bait fish eaters. And so I'm out on this, this big long point in the middle of this cove and I'm seeing a ton of shad down there and not just any shad. These, there's, that might actually be a bass up there, a gar or something. But these shad that are down here spread out bigger on the bottom are gizzard shad. And that's why there's a loon. You know, loons and comorants eat bait fish. They eat the shad. Obviously, I think both birds will eat both types of shad, gizzard and thread fins. But one thing I figured out a little bit as of late is the loons seem to prefer the big gizzard shad. Every time I get around these big gizzard shad that are, are kind of cruising the bottom and I'm around a lot of big fish, big bass, there seems to be loons around. And the comorants seem to stay out a little bit more on the thread fin shad schools, which bass of course eat those too. But these big Florida strains absolutely love the big gizzard shad. I haven't seen a single bass on this spot yet, but in four days, five days, that could absolutely change as these fish get further along in their, their progress. And really it's morning right now too. So later in the day today, they could set up. So something will probably come check um, again before I take the boat out, but we're gonna keep on trucking along.
Well, I found one, guys. <laughs> Look at that one. Oh my god. Double digit, brother. That's a giant. Big old tail down his mouth, too. Crazy. So the event actually has a program where you can take this into the, the marina. If they're over 10 pounds, they'll give you a free replica, kind of like the share lunker program in Texas. But we can't box them. It's not legal to box a fish in tournaments. So there she is. Freaking giant. I'll try to grab some pictures, but get her back in the water. That little spot, spotted bass. Well, I thought the camera was on, but <laughs> apparently not. Just found some to kind of end the night here. Group of little ones. <laughs> About halfway back in a creek. Kind of the first group I've found that's in a creek and they're on bait big time. Carolina rig hog waller. I don't know. I'm not giving up till dark though. Well, <laughs> I found a big one offshore. Big old mark, that is. Unfortunately, hmm. looked good. Looked just like the damn 10 pounder I caught. Hmm. Look at my line. Wow. Burp. All right. A little hog wall of fish, swallowed it deep. Kind of sucks. But it's been slow today. Kind of been scoping a bunch out deeper, trying to find something deep, but keep coming back to the shad spawn type stuff. 
three and a quarter pounder. Not terrible, you guys probably can't see anything. There, how's that? Hog Waller. Yeah, you can be live streamed. <laughs> what do you think, Osborne? I should have just kept driving before I called because I got this spot that's like a mile back behind me and it's like a million little fish. It's the only spot I've found with two pounders that are easy to catch. It's so tough. It was terrible today and yesterday. Oh, that got me excited. No fish. I thought it was a fish. It's a tree. Say goodbye, lure. Ozzy, I got snagged. The weather's beautiful. The fish don't really care. They said, screw you. You can have your nice weather. We're gonna do what we wanna do. What's up, the members? Welcome, uh, fl flash forward to day four of practice. I'll just be straight up with you guys. I haven't found anything notable since about noon, since day one of practice. I wish these tournaments were like one or two days of practice. That would be incredible because it seems like I always find the freaking juice right away. But I've caught random fish just nothing that is of substance um, or really any type of pattern since then. Still have that one good group of deep fish and still have the shad spawn fish that I haven't beat up very much because those fish are, they're kind of resident to those points that I'm fishing. So I don't want to uh, burn a bunch of those. Obviously don't want to burn the deep fish either because that's a group of like, I don't even know, 10 or 15 giant ones. It's dock talk and you don't want to get caught up in it ever. But everyone I've talked to, especially some hammers that I'm buds with, Jack York and freaking Broccoli's a damn hammer too, people are struggling. But And Jack's a local. He's fished out here a lot. His buddy, or he hasn't fished here a lot, but he lives by here. He gets how these Texas fish set up. And there's just a lot of shit going on that's not working together. The problem is the water's not warming up. It's still 64, 65 degrees right now, 67 in some of the creeks I've seen. So the water's not warming up and it's slightly rising, but not like full on flood, like, oh, we'll go flip bushes and frog and stuff. I'm sure people are gonna catch them like that, probably better than I would like. And I don't think there's a lot of bed fish. I've seen some males on beds. Again, I'm sure someone's gonna find it. This place is like as big as every, fishery in Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, and South Dakota where I grew up combined into one fishery. The place is like so diverse. So someone's going to find some stuff, but what I'm trying to say is it's not even like people are like, it's a transition phase, a transition phase. It is, but it's almost like they're not doing anything. <laughs> there is nothing going on that the fish, I don't, I don't know where the big females are. I'll just be straight with you. I've, I still have a day and a half to, to put something else together besides what we found. I'm gonna bounce around and just look up shallow a little bit this morning and then just spend the rest of the time. Toledo is so big that you don't wanna get caught up trying to run different parts of the lake because you'll just spend your whole time running. And as much as a grind as I think this tournament's gonna be, I think you're gonna have to maximize your fishing time in the area you're at. So I'm gonna scan a lot of flats and stuff main lake flats around where I've found fish and just see if I can get one more little something that I know I can go to and get some bites or at least have a chance to uh, add in my bag when it gets tough because there's gonna be times in this two to three day tournament where things are gonna be dire, I got a feeling. Maybe from the first jump if uh, I don't get on my spot of bigs. 
So with that being said, I'm the luckiest man in the damn world. I get to be out on a beautiful lake with all these great fishermen, beautiful weather. There's eagles everywhere. We're out here in freaking nature. Look at this, 230 freaking boats and one of the most popular lakes to fish in the country. And we just pulled into a random cove and there's, there's no one within miles of us. So I can't complain. I'm just gonna have fun today and uh, we'll see what we find. So this is kind of something that isn't super secret to a lot of people, but I thought I'd just show it to you. I didn't realize how many, how much water be back behind some of these bushes and buzz baits can be really hard to get back into some of that stuff. But if you remove the skirt and add a nice flat little trailer, I love this stroker craw for this. A little bit of super glue, make sure he stays on there good. This buzz bait will automatically become a better skipper and those legs create some drag and when it creates drag it makes you be able to pull the buzz bait slower. Just a little tip. Move it next to your pole. So random. Freaking eating in there though, that's for sure. Little shade pocket. Two and a half pounder. Not great. You don't think so, Cole? No. Fuck you. Let's weigh it then. My guess is two one. No, you said two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> right at two. All right, Cole says right at two. I'm saying 2.5. Hold on, we gotta clear the scale. All right, we're at zero. You you're looking at this, Cole? Yep. Come on, go down. No, wrong way. 2.4, 2.4. I don't even give a shit about the tournament now. I got that satisfaction. I was a little bit closer than you. Shady bushes. We got more, a couple million. Not like that was the first one I fished. He was next to Cypress too, actually, wasn't he? Probably a frog garter. Way up high. That one's about 0.17 pounds. He spawned out. He laid the eggs this year. All right, uh, I've been off the water since about 4.30 p.m. today. Uh, ran into a little bit of an issue. Cole, let's show them the issue so they know what I'm talking so about. So this is an engine that propels my boat forward to make it drive. You with me still, Cole? No. What? So this thing, it spins backwards, I think, and you go forward. I don't know how it works, but anyways, I'm not a mechanic, but... I struck an object in the water, and this used to be, uh, uh, it all used to be together. There didn't used to be a hole in there. Uh, so I went to the old service yard today, and they said, for a small price of $7,500, we could get you a brand new lower unit on there. So that is where our practice is going to end. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go get a new lower unit, put on the boat, and uh, hopefully insurance will cover it. We'll see how it goes. Honestly, I'm feeling pretty good about practice. This is probably an interesting video. I've got a really good pattern going up shallow. It's like an offshore pattern, yet it's crazy shallow on some of these offshore points that I don't think anybody else is really 
dialed into yet from what I've seen. And I also have that group of fish offshore that I still have not seen anyone fishing. Doesn't mean no one found them, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to run there first thing in the morning in the tournament. Uh, I think if I can get there, I can catch 25 plus pounds off that spot, but we'll see if anybody's there. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how I can manage that spot too. If I stay there, if I decide to move, whatever. And then I've already talked to Cole about it a little bit. If I get a good bag, um, in five casts or pretty quick again on that spot, then I'm going to piece out of there, manage it for the next couple of days and try to go catch a giant one just out scoping on some of these secondaries where I've seen these giant gizzard shad cruising around. We might have a little bit more footage of this video, the lower uni getting fixed or something, or the tournament uh, meeting. I'm not really sure. Morning. I'm back. Or? Lower unit. You gotta have that off in here. You can't have that on. Have what? The camera? Deal? Sounds good. So, just letting you know. If not, we'll see you guys tomorrow in the video uh, for the tournament. I cannot wait to get this one started. Uh, it sounds like it's been super tough on a lot of anglers. Everyone I've talked to actually has said it sucked. Uh, they're in this fisher in this crazy transition period where it's not even a transition. I've talked to you guys about this. They're just like, the water's slightly coming up, but they want to leave the bank, but they're done spawning, and the water's not coming up super fast, and the water's not warming up, and there's no bluegill spawn. There's some shad spawn, but it's super sporadic. There's shad everywhere. It's just a weird, weird period of time at a lake that's made a huge comeback this year uh, from where it was the last five years and previously it was the best lake in the country. So with that being said, we'll catch you guys at the tournament and uh, please subscribe because that way you'll have notifications, turn your notification bell on or whatever. Is that still a thing, Cole, to people? So, I think so. YouTube still has that feature that lets you know when videos go out. I don't even know if they do because... It's a feature, who knows if it works or not. Yeah, it probably, if they decide that it helps the algorithm to help them make more money, then the feature works good that month and then the next month it doesn't. But uh, we'll catch you guys in the morning. I'm going to finish a couple thousand more beers and I'm out of here.